All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 25th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Um, I would say to Christians and others, do not get too excited about the uh, Dobbs decision that cast out Roe versus Wade. I suspected as much, but uh, this morning I got up and looked up the text of that decision, all 213 pages. I did not bother to read it because I do not really care uh, because their arguments are not based on a solid foundation. It was a technical decision that uh, that the original Roe decision was decided improperly. That's all it was. It was not a decision about abortion, at least none that the judges were willing to express, because it does not actually deal with abortion, just the propriety, uh, propriety of the Supreme Court overruling state laws. And I did a quick search on three words in that decision. God, word was not found. Christ, the word was not found. Jesus, the word was not found. I want to go over to the scripture and read a text from the Lord Jesus himself in his Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, we're going to start at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. And I will declare to them that I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Now, Jesus Christ is the very Word of God, as the first chapter of the Gospel of John declares. He who hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. And so it was that when Jesus ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Well, in the Supreme Court, there are nine scribes. That's all they are. They have no intrinsic authority because 
The entire United States is not built on the rock. It is built on sand. So the issue, the battle in the court has been, you know, what role does the Constitution have? Does it have our strict constructionist, original intent, or is it to be flexible, a living document that can be bent and twisted according to the whims of the time and the whims of the judges in their wisdom? Well, the Constitution is nothing but sand. It is not founded on the Word of God. It does, has no authority above it. It is simply the opinions of a small group of men back in 1889, or 1789, excuse me. It, it has no transcendent authority. See, God exists. There is one God. He exists, and he has spoken, particularly in Jesus Christ. But he sent his prophets. He uh, delivered his law, although that was specifically to Israel. But because the law proceeds out of the very nature of God, the general principles that are uh, that is based on the two great commandments, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else is contingent on those hang used with Jesus words hangs on those two commandments the greatest being the love of God which is commanded of us now those who are rejoicing because of the Dobbs decision what the Supreme Court done has done is cast fire, napalm, if you will, onto all 50 states. This is an election year. You think the last election was fiery. This is going to be worse. Antifa has already assaulted the capital of Arizona, attempted to Rioters attempted to smash their way into the Capitol building. They were repelled with gas, tear gas. Is there going to be a January 6th investigation, a June 24th investigation by Biden and the Democrats? Of course not. Because they are cheering those people right now. Signs out there in the streets, even before this decision was publicly released, calling for Roe to be upheld by any means necessary. And the pro-life forces for decades have been, some of them have gotten themselves a little bit toward the extreme side too. If you will not be ruled by God, you are lawless. Those who will not obey Christ are lawless. The founders of America were lawless because they did not build on the rock. They built on sand. The Enlightenment is nothing but sand. The Supreme Court is nothing but nine men and women sharing their opinions. Again, I searched the... By the way, it was a a 6-3 to three in general, but uh, Roberts, as he usually does, uh, uh, vacillates in his wishy-washy, and he, he did not concur with the majority as far as uh, uh, discarding Roe versus Wade uh, and his precedents. More like, well, I see no reason to throw the whole thing out. He just wanted to define, to just decide on the, the Dobbs case without de uh, throwing Roe out. So it was five to four and six to three, depending on exactly what you're talking about. But this is going to be disastrous for the country. It, they've thrown it out in the streets. They've, they've simply washed their hands of it. You people decide. The states can do what they want with it. in an election year. 
a very hot and dangerous situation as it is after Trump and then Biden this country is extremely divided right down the middle 50-50 more or less there actually there is the two the two that are really sides that are really polarized and then you have a a mushy middle that will become polarized Every state, this is going to be a war in. This is the current situation, according to Wikipedia. This is supposedly the state's uh, current status of law. Some of them had uh, laws on the books that would either were thrown out by Roe, or they had passed new laws that would be triggered in the event of a uh, uh, throwing out of row and this is so you have the the blue the baby blue <laughs> then ironic so the 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 purple is the the uh has no limits on abortion at all no gestation limit uh is birth a limit some places would prefer to be able to abort your children at any age including your grandparents Euthanasia. Oh, grandma is getting to be an inconvenience. Uh, let's do her a favor and kill her. Yeah, that's legal. I think it's in Oregon, that kind of stuff. Euthanasia. A good death. They do it in pretty much all 50 states. They just call it something else. They call it hospice care. They put you on a morphine drip and deprive you of water and nutrition which will kill you. It is just slow execution rather than a quick injection. When they decide your quality of life isn't sufficient or you become an excessive cost burden on the institution. We can't make a profit on you. You're costing us too much. Time for you to go. I mean, they would not use those words, of course. But underlying it, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. So here we have, from black being illegal, red being until there's cardiac activity. So you've got the black states and the red states. Oh, it's interesting the colors they chose, isn't it? Black and red. For the uh, those who were against the murder of infants. And then, of course, the, the others, the, the uh, you know, the green and the blues and the, the purples, they are, you know, purple royal, the royal states. And you had the, the baby blue states and you had the, the green states, the color of life. Yeah, so even the orange, you have legal up to 20 months. This is the current status. Uh, the light green is legal up to 24 months. And the uh, dark green is legal up to uh, 26 months, approximately 26. Uh, so past the, let's see, what's the midpoint? Uh, it's like gestation period is like 52 isn't it? No, it's not. It's nine months. That's what nine, like thirty-six weeks, thirty-seven weeks. And the the baby blue is legal up to fetal uh, viability. However, you want to define that. In other words, can the baby, if we cast it aside outside in the weather, will it live on its own? <laughs> There is no, infants when they're born are not viable apart from the support. They have to be supported in everything or they die. They have to be fed. They have to have, you get fluids. They have to be cleaned. They have to be cared for constantly, pretty much. 
The only difference is you can see them, and they're developing beyond that, or they're they're quickly get begin to respond to you, visibly. That's the current status. So every single one of these states is going to become our or already, see, they already have been a battleground, but now, now, it's for keeps. As long as Roe uh, Ro versus Wade was in place, the, the battling against abortion on a state level didn't really mean much because the states were precluded from doing anything to restrict it. Now that's changed. The states are the battleground. This country is already uh, far moved toward a state of civil war. So you have the uh, the left. It doesn't really show on here, but you've got the left coast and the northeast, pretty much. California, or Florida is sort of a see, like Florida. See, because of Roe, some of these states it really hasn't been an issue. You have states like uh, Texas and uh, Ohio. Illinois and others where they, they have been uh, preparing for a possible end of Roe. Uh, and otherwise just politically passing things because, uh, you know, if you've got a pro-death state passing abortion, pro-abortion stuff is guaranteed the right to kill your children. That is considered, you know, politically uh, a winner like Illinois at least as long as this current government Illinois, this current uh, regime in Illinois, just like the Biden regime. These are not legitimate governments in the sense they are founded on the rock of the words of Jesus Christ, the words of God. The United States was born in rebellion against God, and now it is really, again, it's facing a second civil war. There really already is a civil war in progress. We saw it all during the Trump time. Leading up to that, the, the threat, the, the conservatives who generally have a belief in God and the authority of God. Not always, but they're conservative in name only because to conserve things, you have to believe in the Creator, which is the one and only God and recognize that he has authority to tell us what we should and should not do, or must and must not do. But you had the, the rebel faction that wants to throw off all restraints and have, have been getting in their way since Obama, particularly. Getting in their way since uh, Obama's second period in office, where he just turned them all loose and now you've got somebody that's far worse than Obama Trump was an intermission and the reaction against the, the radical anti-Christ forces because that's what they are and Tifa, BLM all these forces are anti-Christ it has nothing to do with civil rights it has nothing to do with with uh, uh, justice and equality. They want to. Do, they are simply the children of Satan, and it shows. You just look at who founded these movements. They obviously they're not Christians. They are anti-Christian, anti-Christ, anti-family, anti everything that God considers good. And that's a fact just as Joey Biden is. So, this is an election year, and it's going to be a nasty one. It's already in Illinois here. Even among the Republicans, the mudslinging, the lawlessness among the Republican candidates, or others that might not really be Republicans, uh, that are historically Democrat, and they just be don't have an opportunity to run really in the Democratic Party this year because the Democratic Party is not Democratic. 
So we've, we've got a two-party system in this country, too, which is not according to the Constitution. But it's a, uh, uh, the, and the two parties keep it that way. So there's no other real voices allowed. There is no Christian party in this country. There is no one who represents my interests in this country as far as a party goes, because no one represents God, including the Supreme Court, even the conservative justices. Uh, Alito wrote the decision. He did not mention God. What authority do you have for your decision then, Mr. Alito? Or any of the conservatives, what authority do you have that is not in itself arbitrary? So you're really criticizing Roe versus Wade because they weren't con it was not constitutionally based, but the Constitution itself is not based in legitimate authority. It's not based in the that has no grounding in Christ, in God. So it has no legitimacy as far as just human opinion. This is not going to be good. Question is, how are we who are Christians to respond to this? Well, firstly, not violently. Um, he that takes up the sword shall perish by the sword. If they take up the sword, they're going to perish by the sword. This country, because it's been in a state of social and uh, worldview, worldview civil war, the children of God versus the children of the devil, that's it. The children of the Enlightenment, the children of the devil. The, the, the Antifa, children of the devil. The, the radical sexual libertinism, children of the devil. Transgenderism, all this stuff. These people are in re a state of rebellion against God. Obviously. They reject his authority. They know he exists. They simply give him the finger. including some political parties and members on both sides. Now the court says, oh, we don't want this hot potato anymore. Especially when they think, start talking about assassinated judges. Not the Christian side. Note that. It's, the violence is coming from the other side. There has been a few Christians, pseudo-Christians, that have in the past resorted to... Uh, putting a pipe bomb at the back door of a abortion clinic when it was closed, when there was no one there, things like that. And they were treated as terrorists because it was sort of an act of terror. But there, that, uh, the, that guy was a Calvinist. Yeah, the problem with that is it has to do with, uh, he wasn't a follower of Jesus Christ. He was a follower of a religious system. Now, how we respond to this, we have to respond biblically, in Christ. Already, this election, no matter who gets elected, even before this decision, because it, it doesn't, this is a fallen race we are uh, uh, in. We are born into a fallen race. That is why we must be born again to be born into Christ, into his kingdom. Otherwise, we're just playing religious games. And we're, we're living for the same reason the rest of the world is living, for self. But th this cannot be answered with force until Christ returns. But that's the only hope, because... Uh, elected, even if you cast everybody out of the government, it's still going to end up populated by sinners. It's just like churches. Most churches are not filled with born-again believers. They're filled with people that are of the world and, and love, they're self-centered, and they just go there because that particular 
thing that calls itself a church caters to their desires. It pleases them. It pleases them. It makes them feel good. It's like Joel Osteen. That is, that is the epitome of Antichrist religion that calls itself, sort of calls itself Christian. I don't even know if they bother with that. You won't see a cross in his church. You see a globe, the world, rotating in the background. <laughs> Clue right there. But uh, we must respond according to the instructions of Jesus. Turn the other cheek. To answer evil with good. Love our enemies. Because God loved his enemies so much, he sent his son into the world to save sinners. To love our enemies means to proclaim the gospel to them. That God sent his son into the world to save them from their sin. And if they choose not to be saved, if they choose to be, if they love their sin and reject Christ's rule over them, well, that's bad, as Jesus said. In fact, he spoke a parable about that. Let's see if I can find it quick. Uh, 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 it doesn't, yeah, obviously. No, I can't find it. I guess I'm not supposed to mention that one. I'll let it go. I was a little bit, yeah. Anyway, but basically, uh, when Christ returns, those who will not subject themselves to his rule, who reject his authority, will not be permitted to, king to continue. What do you do with uh, unrepentant traitors, militant adversaries? Destroy them. People that have rejected the grace and goodness of God. What's, what, where's, there's, there's only one place for them. God has an eternal penitentiary. Except it doesn't serve to make you penitent. It's a depository for his enemies who will not repent, ever. We're in the last days, brothers and sisters. We're in the last days. Lawlessness reigns. The man of lawlessness, the humanity, has given itself over to lawlessness, especially in what's called the West. The United States. Europe, England, Australia, Canada. Lawlessness. But remember, we must follow the words of Jesus, not respond in, in kind, and not go out and battle on the streets. That's not how you establish righteousness. The American Revolution itself was rebellion against God. And the Civil War was the, the wrath of God on a nation who had the gospel but would not listen to him on both sides, north and south. You notice that uh, the casualties were about equally, equally di distributed. And you had a godless man called Lincoln in office. Don't tell me Lincoln was a Christian. He was not. He did not publicly confess Christ. Nor does the Supreme Court. 
they will not acknowledge the authority of Christ. Nor does anyone I've ever heard in the legislature, the, the Congress, the, the Senate, or the White House publicly acknowledge the authority of Christ over them, superseding any loyalty to anything else. If you've got a God that's under your control rather than you being under his control, that's not much of a God. A God that is convenient, that's not God. In the United States, there's a storm that's been thrown upon this country. The Dobbs decision, the end of Roe versus Wade, will not end this conflict, but will intensify it. Whether there is an election in 2024, I would not put, I would not wager on it. I don't wager anyway, but I, the odds of that happening without there being something to interrupt it. Even this year, the Democrats have expressed their, uh, they are so mad, as in insane, <clears throat> and the President of the United States is so out of his mind and morally bankrupt and corrupt. You know, we see these signs saying, by any means necessary. And a lot of them, I believe, that's what's in their heart. They are so in love with death, so in love with evil, that they have no limits. They are not bound by the Word of God. They're not bound by uh, allegiance to Him. They are children of the devil, the original adversary and rebel. As is everybody else in this world, unless you've been born again. So, the Civil War, there are not nice state boundaries where you had the South and the North. Well, then there was the West, but you have like Missouri, that's where, and Kansas, it'd be more like that. A re not a not a interregional civil war, but something far worse. This war cannot be won with carnal weapons, with guns. And I am, every day when I look at this society and this world and look beneath the surface at its foundations, the only possible hope we have is the return of the King, the return of Jesus Christ himself, because he has authority and he is authority. He is truth. He is justice. He is righteousness. He is all that is good. And all that is contrary to him is evil. He must come and establish his kingdom visibly on earth, not run by a bunch of crazy religionists or Puritans or Calvinists or Theonomists or whatever, or the Pope. We've had enough of that. We've seen the results of that. We need God himself the Son of God, to come and rule and reign over this earth. There is no other lasting hope than that. Everything else is vanity, foolishness, and will fail. In the meantime, we need to proclaim the gospel of Christ, 
that God does indeed so love the world that he gave his only begotten Son to save those who will trust in him. Those that reject him are rejected by God. Christ is coming in judgment. As he counsels, make peace with your opponent. While you're before you get to the court and the judge takes his seat. Because once you reach that point, it's too late to make peace with God. Too late. Be reconciled today through faith in Christ, in Christ alone. Trust in the goodness and grace of God alone. Anything else is a vain hope. If you want to go out and crusade in the streets to pursue violence and rebellion against God, know that your time is short. Repent before judgment comes. The full judgment when the king takes his seat and you will appear before him. Too late to seek his mercy and grace then. It's offered today, it will not be offered then. 